six million Soviet soldiers converged on Berlin. The Soviet steamroller was unstoppable and the final pages of the Third Reich were yet to be written. At this point in the war, being a gendarmerie officer was extremely dangerous since the Soviets at Berlin's gates shot anyone displaying an identification ball like this one around their necks. These scenes were rugged, but they had been repeated for a couple of years in Russia and now in Germany. Soviet security forces, the NKVD, executed German prisoners by slamming their heads with hammers and empty shell casings. Little tales of heroism emerge from the rubble. This is the story of a man who destroyed 13 tanks in unequal combat and avoided death by a stroke of luck. Born in Berlin and after studying economics, Heinz Heuer enlisted in the police school of Brandenburg in 1936, where he spent two years preparing for duty. He later participated in the Spanish Civil War. After the Civil War and having completed his training, he was transferred to the Ministry of the Interior Headquarters in Berlin. In addition, he served in the Wehrmacht Oberkommando, becoming a male liaison for the police. As part of his mail service, he was also assigned to the elite division Brandenburg and served in Africa and Turkey. His service did not remain unnoticed. Hoyer received the first decorated police badge of distinguished driver. We begin our protagonist's adventure on April 16, 1945, when he receives a special order from General Krebs. There were reports of an advanced Soviet command post in the area, Quickly, he gathered a small group of 28 men. They armed themselves to the teeth with assault rifles, hand grenades and panzerfaust, which were very fashionable at the end of the war. Their mission would be to clear the Russian redoubt by marching under the cover of night. On their way to the target, Hoyer and his grenadiers spot a column of 40 Soviet tanks, but they went unnoticed. A little later, they found the Soviet outpost, which was well garrisoned by Russian sentries. Using a bold move worthy of the classical era's heroic feats, they stormed the position and captured critical maps and documentation. On their way back to the German lines, they are again surprised by the same armored column, and this time they could not escape. They engaged in a fierce and unequal battle. 28 policemen against the most savage steel beasts of World War II, with anti-tank rockets carried by hand and desperately launching dozens of Panzerfaust at point-blank range with and almost suicidal bravery, they destroyed 27 of the 40 enemy tanks. Hoyer collecting Panzerfaust here and there from dead comrades brought down 13 Soviet tanks. General Krebs could not believe it when informed of the brilliant battle and mission success. On the 22nd of April, under the watchful eye of Generals Bergdorf and Fagelein, Hoyer received the famed Knight's Cross. He was promoted to third lieutenant in the armory. One more task was assigned to our soldier, and this was the delivery of a personal message from Adolf Hitler to SS General Felix Steiner. Hoyer left with a motorcycle to his objective, but was captured by a Soviet outpost. In the pure style of spy movies, the gendarme swallowed the message before it fell into the hands of the enemy. The Soviets were unwilling to take prisoners, so they gave him a shovel to dig his own grave. As typical Russian humor, his executioner offered him one last cigarette. Suddenly, a terrible artillery barrage explodes and turned the area into a hellish nightmare. The Russians were taken by surprise, and Hoyer run with all his strength. The Russians remained on the ground and had not seen him scaped. He finally got away in the pure James Bond style.
Shortly after the Second World War was over, he could not avoid Soviet captivity once and for all. First, he was sent to the depths of the Russian steppes in Chelyabinsk, Siberia, and then to a punishment camp in Omsk. He finally returned to Berlin, but was arrested again. But after liking a nurse, she selflessly helped him cross to the western area. Hoyer, who was now a real sack of bones after so many years of deprivation, became a respectable police officer in West Germany. His story does not end here. Many years later, and wearing his investigator's uniform, he approached the towns of Leisenwald and Waldensberg to inquire about his stepbrother's mysterious death. He belonged to the Northern Division of the SS, an irreducible unit that refused to surrender to the Americans. After a tough fight, this formation gave in to the Allies. They came out with arms raised, the war was over, but they received no mercy and were shot. What's more, the locals talked about how the American soldiers had fun shooting the corpses of the 6th SS Mountain Division Nord. When the graves were exhumed in 1961, those executed had multiple bullet holes throughout their bodies and heads. Only one corpse could be identified.